the second game of a non-conference weekend showdown. And tonight, Notre Dame goes for the sweep against a talented Boston University Terrier team that hopes to right the ship. And so we say hello and welcome you inside the Compton family. I, Serena, Tony Simeone, so happy to have you with us. Joined by the 14-year NHL man, Steve Conroy. Steve, last night we saw Notre Dame, a team that only scored four goals through the first three games this season, bust out with four in the first 25 minutes last night. That's the offensive production we're looking for the rest of the year. It was good to see head coach Jeff Jackson said we were getting chances. We just weren't finishing. Last night they finished. And, of course, you want to score goals, you want the power play going. The power play was growing. Drew Bavaro, that's a great shot through traffic. Nothing the goaltender could do. How about Landon Slager, his third goal of the year? I like the setup there from Ryan Seedham. And then the rush by Brendan Ali. Great feed to Justin Janicki, who goes hard to the net. The redirection. And, yeah, the power play we talked about, it struck again. That's Danny, uh, Danny Nelson with his second of the year, a power play goal, and an offensive off outburst for the Fighting Irish. It wasn't just the power play. It was the penalty killing, too. They did a really good job keeping shots to the outside, blocking shots when they had to. Funny, the thing about a uh, penalty kill, it can give you momentum. Even though you're not scoring goals, it's almost as good when you don't allow a goal. And a real good job again by Ryan Seedham. The block shot, the poke check, they gain an awful lot of momentum after some very successful penalty kills. You mentioned the penalty kill, but on the other side for Boston University, they have to be a little bit concerned now two weeks into the year. You look at what the power play was unable to do last night. They're not producing offensively. Quite frankly, Steve, they look discombobulated at times last night. This is a better team than they put on display. We expect a better performance tonight. Certainly. It's a team looking for answers, though, and they need somebody to step to the forefront, whether it's on special teams on the power play, whether it's on the penalty kill, Kill, which at times looked uh, disjointed, but they are looking to score some goals. And typically when you ask a team to score some goals, you look to the power play. Look at last season. They had no problem scoring goal, almost four per, four, per, uh, four per game. This year, a different story, the goals against. But maybe the most surprising thing there is the power play, 0.07%. Uh, basically just 7%, which is not very good in the NCAAs. Now the Terriers will look to bounce back tonight while the Irish hunt for the sweep when we return. Boston University and Notre Dame will take the ice for game two. set for game two tonight, but nothing more important than this for BU. Lane Hudson, their first team All-American from last year, injured on this hit last night in game one, out of the lineup day to day. They're going to be without their leading scorer, likely their best returning player tonight, Steve. How do they find a way to replace him? Jack Page is into the lineup, but it's tough to replace someone like Lane Hudson. Yeah, you hit the nail right on the head. It's got to be by committee. It's just not one guy who can replace a Hudson. It's got to be a collective uh, a collective effort, and not just from the back end. The forwards really have to help out, too. They have not done a good job defensively over their first three, four games to start the year. If you missed the game last night, Cade Weber still not into the lineup for BU. He's a graduate student and one of the most experienced defensemen. So the Terriers without their two likely best defensive players in game two and the season two weeks into the year has not gone according to plan for the Terriers. Preseason number one. They won their opener against Bentley in overtime since they've lost to New Hampshire. They scored the opening goal last night, and then Notre Dame scored four unanswered to win by a 4-1 tally. They are looking for a big bounce back tonight in game two. And again, you look at the goals, and this is something head coach Jay Pandolfo talked about in the loss to UNH and the national development team. We had numbers back, but just soft coverage. You know, just skating by pucks, and the first penalty will go to the Fighting Irish. Skating by pucks, and uh, defensively, he wants them to be a lot better. And delayed penalty. Coming up here, Terriers have a chance to get an extra attacker on here with the net empty. So just a little bit more than a minute into the game, we saw a ton of penalties last night in the opener. And Boston University now trying to capitalize here with the extra attacker. Here's for Shet's shot, who goes up high over the bar. Trevor Janicki touches it. And for the first time tonight, we'll hear a penalty call. The hooking will be the call. Looks like it is going against Trevor Janicki. Audio for the referee is not working, but that's the signal. And Trevor Janicki in the penalty box. 
never like to see it when you're down in the offensive zone, but yeah, trying to reach in around the player who goes down at Celebrini, who felt the pressure and maybe upended a little bit. He goes down and Justin Janicki, Trevor Janicki make that in the penalty box. Well, this is the matchup to keep an eye on. BU's power play against the Irish penalty kill. You saw it in the open. Six power play opportunities last night for the Terriers. They were 0 for 6. Great work on the kill by the Irish, but now a BU team that's just 1 for 13 to start the season on the advantage. There's a long range shot from the stick of Tom Willander. Freshman defenseman fires it in on the netminder for Notre Dame, Ryan Bischel, who is coming off a 43 save performance last night. Steve, look at what he did. I mean, the numbers continue to improve for a guy who now might be considered the best goaltender in college hockey. Yeah, he's certainly in that conversation. And we make a lot of the fact, Tony, that the Irish scored four goals. Let's not forget about some of those stops he made. I mean, he certainly kept them in there early in the hockey game. Even when they were down one nothing, I believe the shots were 10 5 10 6 uh, Ryan Bishop makes it look easy sometimes and some of those saves are a lot tougher than they look Danny Nelson was working in shorthanded it was played that time by Matthew Caron Bishop's counterpart on the other side of the ice and the Terriers will keep the power play going Bishop's numbers last year 930 save percentage was the Big Ten goaltender of the year as Macklin Celebrini works in Shane LaChance picks up the puck, and now Willander sets the power play at the blue line. Over to Wilmer, in the circle, back for Willander. Here's Celebrini, walks his way in, shot didn't get through. Good work by Zach Kluzinski for Notre Dame to block the shot. Comes back out for Willander, across for Wilmer, now a one-timer feed in the slot for Ryan Green, who scored the only BU goal last night. His shot deflects up out of play. Well, Tony, we talked about that man. Macklin Celebrini, and he will probably go first overall in next year's NHL amateur draft. He certainly didn't look like himself last night. He was pressing at times. He got his shots. I believe he ended up with five shots. Yep. But just, you know, not the kind of performance we were expecting. Now, listen, he's putting a lot of pressure on himself, and he is all of a sudden one of the leaders on this team. And we should point out, we didn't mention this in the broadcast yesterday, yeah. 30 NHL scouts were at this hockey game last night. They're not here to watch us. <laughs> no, they're not. They are not. 19 total draft picks on these two rosters combined. That does not include Celebrini, who, as you mentioned, is expected to go towards the top of the upcoming draft in spring of 24. Had two points in each of the first two games this season. And we'll see if he busts out tonight. Still some time on this opening power play for the Terriers, who get their second power play unit on the line. Here's Case McCarthy, captain and defenseman, has the puck. Deflect towards the slot. A turnaround shot from the senior Luke Tuck deflects towards the corner. And they keep the engine rolling. Here's Quinn Hudson. Had seven shots. The brother of Lane Hudson, who we mentioned, is out of the lineup tonight for BU. Shot goes wide. Now it rolls around beyond the stick of Devin Kaplan. Comes out for Hudson at the line. Irish have killed off the opening power play. So it's a perfect 7-for-7 seven seven on the weekend. But it doesn't matter now as Quinn Hudson finds some space. And the Terriers have the first goal again. Yeah, it was not a power play goal. It was 5-on-5. Five five. I wonder if Carter Schlager maybe screened Ryan Bischel a little bit. He's looking up at the replay. Watch 25 try to front Hudson, who has the puck out of the point. He'll get it right now. 25 heads out. You know, there's a little bit of a stumble. You know, Slager doesn't get out like he wants to. He stumbled a little bit right there. Now, is he in the lane? Yes, he is just a little bit. Don't believe it went off his shin pad, but you know, Ryan Bischel typically makes a stop like that. It looks like maybe he didn't see it to the last second. Not one you normally see Ryan Bishop miss. This might give us a really clear idea of that lane as well, Steve. There's yeah. a tip maybe. It, it possibly could have been. Not only did he have Carter Slaggart there, there was another fighting Irish player off to the side. I believe that was Cole Knubel. Might have even gone off of his stick. I, I don't know for sure, but uh, as you mentioned, yeah. They did it last night, BU, first goal of the game. See if the Irish have a similar response. It was 1-0 BU right around this same time, about four and a half minutes in. And the Irish really turned the tables and dominated play the rest of the way. Dylan Peterson loses an edge in the corner, and the Irish take the puck away. Grant Silvanov backhands a feed across the line. It's loose, coming out towards the middle of the ice, and there's Peterson. Right place, right time, plays it for himself, trying to navigate through traffic. 
And now a backhanded shot comes from Sam Stevens. It rolls all the way back out to center ice. Well, lost in that goal is the fact that the Irish, as you mentioned, killed another penalty. So that's seven for seven against BU. And did a real good job uh, well, basically keeping those shots to the outside. Well, so far, it's kind of a similar start to last night, Steve. You mentioned BU's got the advantage in shots, four to one. There's a look at Hudson, who talks so much about his brother Lane, who led them in scoring last year as a defenseman. Quinn's a forward. He was great last night. Led them in shots with seven. That's a big time goal to bounce back, kind of set the tone for a BU team that did not probably feel good after last night's result. Yeah, and Heather head coach Jay Pandalfo talked about the team needing to look in the mirror. And it, they can't feel sorry for themselves. It's got to come from within. And yeah, that's exactly the type of start you want. This puck batted towards Bishop in a precarious spot. Now it does come towards the wall where Celebrini tries to navigate through traffic. He does! He shoots and scores! Oh my goodness! What's that they say? Shoot, score, Celebrini with some magic in the offensive zone. Well, he did that in a tight area too. He had a couple of different fighting Irish players very close to him. Landon Slager oh, right in his grill and the move inside. Huh? Danny Nelson, he goes around. Backhand to forehand and then the quick release. And that's something we didn't really see much of yesterday. I love this move here. The backhand to the forehand and then really quick release as Slager tried to get to it. Actually had to double clutch to get to it. It beats Ryan Bischel to the inside. So Ryan Bischel almost perfect last night. He has now allowed two goals on the first five shots he has seen. That's what we expected to see this weekend from Macklin Celebrini. You saw the skill on display there, Steve. I counted four Irish skaters he was in the midst of when he navigated and made that shot. Goodness gracious. Well, that's a sign of real good players. Willing to skate to traffic. You know, being fearless in that regard. And that could be off-putting as a defenseman. You know, when a guy's coming at you instead of trying to go around you, he will skate to traffic. We know he's a great skater. He's got the real good shot. And we saw all of those things on that second terrier goal. Jay Pandolfo has to be thrilled with the way his young Terrier roster has responded after a disappointing loss last night. In the blink of an eye, they have really jumped out in front here. 2-0, there is a look at the head coach in his second season. Took them to the Frozen Four last year. They have similar aspirations this year. Former NHLer brings a ton of experience here to this BU team where he played as well. Yeah, it's funny, Tony, we talked to him. He, he, he mentioned Bruce Cassidy, a former teammate of mine with the Chicago Blackhawks. He was an assistant coach with Bruce Cassidy in Boston. And he said he learned an awful lot. And we'll watch this first. Oh, my gosh, <laughs> goals galore! Just like that. Ryan Seedham has been so good in the early start to this season for the Fighting Irish. Again, a face-off win, and it's a 50-50 puck, but they get it back to Seedham, and look at the traffic. Now, Karan did not see that until the goal light came on. And Seedham never looks down at the puck. He's just looking the whole way through, trying to find a, a route for this puck to get through. He finds it. Ron didn't see it, and that's an important goal for the Fighting Irish. You pointed out Seedham a few times last night, had a great game, the grad transfer from Harvard for Notre Dame. Picked up his first two assists of the year last night. That's now his first goal with the Irish. He's been a real spark plug for this team on the blue line. This is what he did last night, Steve. Yeah, it, you know, it's not just the offense, it, it's defense too. And he's, and he's not the fastest guy in the world, but I love him positionally. Watch the block shot here, you know, sacrificing the body. And again, watch the stick. And he's got, a, he's a big body, but he's got a long stick, you know. It's going to be Lane Hudson trying to get around him. Uh-uh, not so fast. He picks his pocket, gets it going the other direction. And I love this setup. And this was the Landon Slager goal. Fakes like he's going behind the net, throws it back out front. So it's not only defense, it's offense, too, for Ryan Seedham. And as you mentioned, the first goal of his fighting Irish career. Well, both teams have shown great resolve. Last night, Notre Dame came back after the early goal, then right away, BU set the tone with a couple early strikes, and now Seedham gets the Irish right back within one as Jake Boltman fires in transition. Good stop by Matthew Caron to smother the rebound. Uh, this has been a really entertaining first six minutes, Steve. You've got to catch your breath. Already three goals in the net. Well, we were expecting some high-scoring games, especially from BU, with all the uh, 
with all the talent they've got. Matthew Caron, they gave up four goals last night. Not all on him, but I'm just watching in this game early. He's not doing a good job covering rebounds. I mean, he's, pucks are coming to his glove and it's not been clean. And that's typically a sign that a goalie is you know, maybe a little bit off. And if I'm on the bench, I'm going to be, hey, guys, you get an opportunity to shoot the puck on this guy. We saw it a few times last night. And the Terriers are on the move again. Another opportunity from Dylan Peterson. Bischel may have gotten a piece, may have even glanced the iron. Wilmer then right back for Peterson to his backhand. And it's a third Terrier strike in the opening six plus minutes. I wonder if the Fighting Irish are going to call a timeout because right now they are on their heels. Peterson, as you mentioned, almost scored 15 seconds earlier when he went in. Tried to go upstairs, and I don't know if Bischel got a piece of that. It went up over the crossbar. But watch the second attempt. He gives it, he goes, he gets it back. And that's a one-on-one, -on -one, a breakdown right down the gut. And a real nice move by Peterson. Great finish. And he restores the two-goal lead. Peterson's great player. Last year had just five goals after a 10-goal performance as a sophomore same year he was a bean pot MVP I mean he's a really talented skater scorer and they needed him to step up right there great finish you can see his skill on full display oh yeah and he's a big body too 6'4 205 pounds better yet out of Roseville California not a lot of uh, Roseville California uh -huh. natives playing NCAA hockey coast to coast <laughs> kind of like his goal <laughs> west coast to east coast <laughs> Exactly. Well, BU has to be really happy with what they've seen here. The team that did not look like themselves last night has looked advertised tonight. Preseason number one team in the country. And again, they're without two of their most important defensemen in Weber and Hudson. And so far, so good. Early response. They're looking for their fourth here. Just about seven and change in, and it tips up out of play. It'll be a faceoff coming in the Irish zone. There's a little more jump to their step, don't you think? Yeah. It's like, you know, all of a sudden you score three goals in the first seven and a half minutes, and you feel a little more confident. There's Dylan Peterson. You see that size. Played some hockey in the uh, USHL. Also a, a third round selection of the St. Louis Blues. And one of 12. Members of this BU roster that have been selected in the NHL draft. In fact, over the last two years, they've had the most draft picks amongst any ho college hockey program. Trevor Janicki does well to speed down the ice and beat an icing call for Notre Dame and then cycles it down low, looking for Cole Knubel. Knubel shoves off a check, carries it below. Wow, somehow feeds it through traffic for Plazinski. Then he lost his edge, and here come the Terriers. It's Tuck with Kaplan. Tuck walking in, and it's the fourth goal of the opening period. It's an onslaught from the Terriers as Luke Tuck lights the lamp. What a shot by Luke Tuck, who last night only had one shot the entire game. He calls his own number here, two on one. You think might be he's going to pass. He sees a spot. Beats Bischel glove side. Look at how far Bischel was out, too. I take that back. That one's stick side. Oh, no. <laughs> I was 0 for 2. That went 5 hole. <laughs> Bischel did get a piece of it, though, and that's why the puck ended up in one side of the net. But that is a fantastic Time shot. Out, and Notre now, Dame. Jeff Jackson has called the timeout. I think there's Boston University fans watching this saying, where was this the first two weeks of the season? This is what they're capable of. Everybody knows that, Steve, when they walk into any building. They certainly didn't look like it last night. They look every bit of the part tonight. And as you mentioned, Jeff Jackson has to use his timeout and settle them down somehow. It's seven and a half minutes in and already four goals in the back of the net. Yeah, and you know, right now, you, I can almost read his lips. He's talking about our defensive style of play right now. Can't be giving them two on ones, can't be giving them three on twos. That's what's basically happened with the last couple of goals. And you can just see the confidence in this BU team. They want the puck, there's a little pep to their step, they've got the jump, and they want to be shooting pucks. And, you know, last night they were deferring. There was a lot of extra passes that maybe they shouldn't have been making. And right now this is a confident team. You don't see that often from Jeff Jackson behind the bench, giving a real stern talk. You don't see a timeout in the first period, really, yeah. ever. 
Uh, he wanted to get the troops together and say, come on now. If you're a Notre Dame team, this is not the way they usually play hockey. You can put the script and reverse them last night, normally much more sound in their own end and structure. It hasn't looked that way for the first seven and a half minutes. Well, that's what he talked about in his midweek meeting with us. They want to generate off of their defense. And right now the defense has not looked very good. See how they respond after that break. As there have been five total goals scored here in the first eight minutes of the game. Hunter Strand has it for Notre Dame. Looking for a way out of the zone, and he does find Brendan Ali, who played a really sharp game last night for the Irish, picked up his first career point, assisting on the third goal of the game. His skating, what really separates him from a lot of other people. He's just a, a high-end motor. It's always running, it's always running on high. Played with the development team also in the USHL. He just stood out to me, as you said, his skating last night was creating some chances, and they're both these teams really with an injection of youth in the freshman class. They need that from their freshmen as the season goes along. And that's why when you look at this Irish team, the biggest difference from last year is the speed. There's a lot more speed up front. They play a faster game. And, you know, for the opposition, that becomes a lot tougher. You've got to make quicker decisions. You've got to make better decisions. And that's how they're hoping to take advantage. Here's Pluszynski, who fires a shot, deflects, doesn't go through, ends up in the corner. Landon Slaggart, the captain, had it for a moment, sent it back out to the line. Then they say that Pluszynski brought the puck out and carried it back in. I mentioned the way this roster is broken down earlier, Steve. Freshman class is something they're going to rely heavily on. You saw Danny Nelson right there. Freshman scored his second goal of the year last year, second round pick of the Islanders. But look at that. They're expecting eight members of that freshman class to contribute right away. And they have been. You know, Danny Nelson, a freshman with another goal last night. You know, the one freshman who hasn't scored yet, and he's played very well, Cole Knubel. Yeah. Uh, and I'm talking about freshman forward. Uh, Cole Knubel and Jeff Jackson talked about it, thinks the youngsters may be pressing a little bit right now. Goals have come easy for him in his career thus far, but uh, you know we're only four games in, but at the college level, he's been squeezing the stick a little bit. There's Ty Gallagher, junior defenseman for BU, skated down, fired one that ricocheted out, and back forward is the captain, Case McCarthy. Fires one through center. Peterson's right there. Carry it into the zone on his own as the Terriers make a change behind him. Sends it down low, looking for Sam Stevens. Back out for Gavin McCarthy, brother of oh. Case. Fires it, and it's redirected in. Shayla Chance from a wicked angle gets it to go, and it's 5-1 BU. Shayla Chance has been in front of the net on every single power play. Has not been able to connect with a shot or a rebound, but here, really good eye-hand coordination. Watch him reach for the puck. This is going three feet wide. I hope we get an end zone look at this. He's going well wide. He gets his stick on it, tips it into the empty net, or the open side of the net. Now watch here. This puck, now maybe five feet wide, but it ends up in the middle of the net. Real good job. A uh, little bunt play, a little tap, and it brings it back into the net. Nothing Ryan Bischel could do. And a five-goal first period, not even 10 minutes in for the Boston University Terriers. And a penalty appears to be coming up as well against Notre Dame and Jake Boltman. Yeah, Boltman heading to the box. I did not see the play, so I'll wait for the call. Notre Dame penalty, number six, two minutes interference. Interference is the call. Oh, yeah. Boltman got involved after the fact. Jaden Davis was tied up with the BU player, and uh, Boltman gets the interference call. So BU had an early power play. They did not score, and then a couple seconds later, they did score, and since then, they've been unrelenting. They've got the puck again in the slot, tipped towards net, driven wide, and Macklin Celebrini is right there. Sends it out to Tom Willander, back for Celebrini. Works his way in, shoots just wide, goes into the corner, comes out towards the line. Landon Slagger had it for a moment. He takes a spill, and play continues. Here's Ryan Green, shoots for Bischel. Wow, again, a stick from Lachance. Got on that puck before it deflected up and out of play, and that'll stop the clock. Well, the confidence in this team right now, five goals on 11 shots. Celebrini, I'm pretty sure that one went off the post. He came in from that offside. 
You see him rotating now. Celebrini, for the most part last night, stayed to the right side, the left shot. Now he's going to the left side. Watch him walk in. The shot, yeah, that went oh, right. Oh, wow. Basically where the post meets the crossbar, I think. That was just the way it came off. Another clean one off the faceoff. Willander shoots, and Bischel has to come across. 14 to 3 is the advantage right now for the Terriers and shots. Across for Wilmer. In front it goes. Another one hits the right post. Lachance had a chance at his second, and it wouldn't go. You know, Wilmer gave him the shot pass. He redirected it, but he stayed with it. Got the rebound, but just put it off iron. Willander across for Celebrini. Carries it, shoots it. Bischel makes the save and is able to hold it. Real good puck movement by the Terriers. And there's the, the, the hard pass, the redirection, but he stays with it. He gets it off the pads. Shane Lachance just brings it off the iron. Shane Lachance, we mentioned last night, son of Scott Lachance, longtime NHLer. Scott Lachance, though, a defenseman. Shane Lachance, a big forward. In case you're curious, Steve, last time BU scored five goals in a period, it was January 24th of 2020. So not as long ago as I yeah. thought against UMass Lowell. I'm going to have to look up and see if they get another one here when the last time they had six. They might not have that one in the notes. My gosh. Danny Nelson pokes it to himself. Here he comes, shorthanded. Nelson on his backhand and a great back check that time by Devin Kaplan to break it up. Very easily could have been interference on Danny Nelson. Not sure why there wasn't a call, but he finished it off pretty nicely. Big save by Karan. Case McCarthy off for Kaplan. Across it goes. This is Jack Hughes. Over for Hudson. Holds it out front. Now he carries it down low as again the power play is unsuccessful for the Terriers. But offense has not been an issue as Mick Frechette comes on the ice, fires a wrist shot that Bischel is able to stop. It's the 17th shot for BU. And, oh, that was almost a partial break, but it'll be icing. But it has been an onslaught, and obviously Jay Pandalfo and his coaching crew. I'm sure broke down tape last night, had a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings with his team. And listen, whenever you come into a season and you're projected to be the number one team in the nation, that puts a lot of pressure on guys, especially when you have a lot of freshmen. Uh, maybe unfairly so, but I like the response here tonight. That has been you know, really impressive. Look at that number. 18 to three in shots for the Terriers. They're on pace for more than 60. As there's a broken stick out there, still enough. As the puck for Notre Dame pivots, fires, McCarthy wisely clears it towards the corner. Puck's not out of harm's way yet. Now it is into the neutral zone. Grant Silinoff takes it away for Notre Dame. Henry Nelson up for Brennan Ali. Strand's able to hold the line. It's given right back. Puck's loose and at the center of the ice. Ali sends a big check on Zabonet. Ali then has it, and the Irish are offside as Silinoff could not hold his line. Seven minutes and 21 seconds left in the first. Six goals in total. The story, though, the Terriers. Macklin Celebrini got them going early, and they've been running ever since. 5-1 BU in the first. Talked about it all weekend long. This team from Boston University is just loaded with talent. Look at that, 14 total on the roster. They had 12 in the lineup last night. You can see by year they've had four in each of the last two classes. On your screen is Shane Lachance. He's just one of them. Sixth round of Edmonton in 21. And it doesn't even include Macklin Celebrini, Steve, yeah. who they expect to get drafted next year. Yeah, he will probably go first overall. So, uh, yeah, that's a lot of talent. And let's not forget the Fighting Irish. Uh, they have a number of drafted players on this squad also. Landon Slager, who scored last night, a draft pick of the Chicago Blackhawks. Danny Nelson, their highest picked player as far as round is concerned. Freshman, second rounder of the Islanders. Tyler Carpenter has the puck for Notre Dame. Let's see if the Irish can just slowly chip away at this one. It's a long way back, trailing 5-1 this early. Did not see this coming after the way they, these two teams played last night. As Maddox Fleming shoots one, it doesn't get through. Andrew Bavaro 
Across for Henry Nelson. He shoots one from a wide angle. Karan makes the save. Again, that rebound was loose, yeah. and he had to come out to stop it. Yeah, I thought that puck, maybe a quick whistle because the referee thought it was up in his bread basket, but it had bounced out of the reach of Karan. It looks like he's calling a penalty here. Going against BU. Roughing the call on Frechette. So something happened in front of the net after that puck was loose momentarily. There's a shot from a tough angle. Comes off of the body of Karan, and there's Frechette, who had a couple of extra whacks there. Peterson in on the uh, on the play, too. And I believe that was Tyler Carpenter who drew that penalty. Last night, Notre Dame had a couple of power play goals. Jay Pandolfo, head coach for BU, was quick to point out special teams were an issue on both sides. So see how both teams respond. First time the Irish have had a chance to go on the power play against this Terrier kill tonight. Hasn't started well. They lose the draw on the faceoff. It goes down the ice. And then Lane and Slager trying to make the blue line kind of get stopped up. And it gets sent down the ice. Here's Drew Bavaro. Scored a power play goal. The opening goal last night for the Irish from right about here. Winds it up and he hit the crossbar. Oh my goodness, it got everything but the back of the net. It's a big shot. Moynihan has it for Fleming as the Irish still maintain possession. Bavaro, quarterback in the power play. Thinks about it, now he does shoot. This one does not get through. Good work by the captain, Case McCarthy to block the shot, then it did come out of the zone, and offside is the call. Yeah, good block by McCarthy, and that was off a wrister from Bavaro, but here's the slapper. A big, heavy shot. Why well, that moved the net. <laughs> that thing hit the top crossbar, and that net rattled. And that was a big, heavy shot. Bavaro's hoping they look at the replay, but yeah, that was clearly not across the goal line. Just off the crossbar, but a big shot from the youngster who scored last night in the power play. Six goals last year. Preseason second team all Big Ten. Got his first goal of this season last night. It's about an inch away, maybe a half an inch away from picking up his second. Still 40 seconds left. Irish bring the second power play line out, and this is chipped up all the way back into their own end. So far, so good for this Terrier penalty kill. Hunter Strand. Tried to take it into the offensive end and drop the pass behind Trevor Janicki. Terriers will make a change while the Irish have to retreat. Janicki all the way across for his brother Justin. Here's Justin Janicki, younger of the two, takes it around the net. Knubel absorbs a hit along the boards, then it comes across for Trevor Janicki. His speed hits the skate of a Terrier. Power plays over. Pressure still on, though, below the net. Janicki has the puck. Justin Janicki shoots just wide. Comes out towards the line where Seedham waits. He's got the lone Irish goal. And as Trevor Janicki holds the puck from a wide angle, tries to shoot, didn't get through, and then it's just out in front of Karan, and he can fall on top of it. We take a look at the record of the Fighting Irish after winning games. Next game, they're 4 9 and 3. And after losses, boy, big bounce back in those <laughs> games 10, 4, and 1. And this is going to last season. If you recall last year, Steve, they won back to back games in October. And as, as I remember, it was until late January they did not win consecutive games. They had a really tough time stringing together wins, which is the downside of that graphic, but they were good at bouncing back after losses. That's. Talks a lot about your consistency. You yeah. Know, just and obviously the other team digging in. When you win the first game, they are, you know, really hunkering down, trying to salvage the series. Uh, but still, sometimes speaks to consistency, and that's something they've got to find. Another penalty coming up here. Celebrini was being worked on. And it's going to be the third penalty already in this period to go against Notre Dame. Yeah, head coach Jeff Jackson will not like that. Danny Nelson, he's a big, he's a big strong kid. And he got a bit of a push from Celebrini, didn't like it, and both sticks come up, and that extra shot right there yeah. goes the penalty. 
And if he skates away after he knocks down Celebrini, I, I think everything's okay. But instead, he kind of towers over him and gives him the extra shot. And that's something the youngster will learn. Saw 15 total penalties called last night. Seven against BU, eight against Notre Dame. And still here in the first period, that's now the third to go against the Irish. Terriers have taken one. Now, Notre Dame has killed both power play opportunities. Terriers still 0 for 8 on the weekend and 1 for 15 to begin the season. Looking for their sixth goal of the opening period. Macklin Celebrini has one of those. Has the puck, looking for it again. Puck jumped over his stick that time. Carries it down low below the goal line. And his pass, no look pass that time. Intercepted by the Irish captain, Landon Slagger, and he clears it. Here's Tom Willander. Speeds into neutral zone. Drops it back for Ryan Green. Fans on his pass, but gets it right back. Green. Down for Jeremy Wilmer. Back for Willander. Across it goes for Celebrini. Fires the shot, goes over the crossbar, and ricochets all the way out. One thing on the power play, if you shoot from an angle, try and get it on net, because if you miss, chances are it's going to rim the boards and head out over the uh, blue line to the offensive zone. That's exactly what happened with Celebrini. Still 45 seconds left. Celebrini out there. Goes across for Wilmer. And another pass through the slot that's broken up by Grant Silinoff. Plays it out for himself, and he's got some speed. Good work by Willander, who's tired at the end of a shift to fight him off and get it back. And Willander had been out there for a minute and a half, almost a minute and a half, and a good stick by Silinoff. Just getting into a passing lane. He broke up that play inside his blue line and almost found himself on a breakaway. Silabrini finally goes to the bench after a minute and 40 out there. Kaplan has it, drops it back. Terriers in the final seconds of their third power play. Somehow they've had three power plays in this period. They might not score on any of them, Steve, and they still have five goals. <laughs> I don't know how that works. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> And especially after the performance we saw last night, and especially five on five, there was just nothing happening there for that team. And, you know, frustration, and they're a young team, and sometimes it's easy to get frustrated when you've got a lot of youngsters on the squad. But a different looking team tonight, playing with tons of confidence, and just looks like everyone wants the puck. And that is certainly a good sign for Jay Pandolfo and his coaching crew. So Notre Dame has now killed all three penalties here in the period. Right away, Peterson's back on the puck with less than two minutes to go here in the first. Bischel sees this one the whole way. He makes the save. That is his 15th save of the first period. We talked a lot about Notre Dame. Here's how BU breaks down as well, Steve. You see an injection of youth. We had nine freshmen, five sophomores. So that's 14 guys who are going to be around for at least another couple, maybe three years. Uh, the juniors, the seniors, and four graduate students. So they lost a lot of guys last year, and that's part of the reason they've got all these freshmen coming in. But boy, there's some really quality players with very little college experience on the ice. We talked about it last night, too. Both coaches, despite all the talent and youth, the teams got off to maybe herky jerky starts in the first couple weeks. They were quick to point out we need the veterans to step up. Even there might be a lot of young talent coming into these rosters, I think they both said something along the lines of, we need our old guys to be old guys and veterans and lead the way. I'm starting to see a little bit more of that from both teams over the course of these two nights. Yeah, and it's f funny, both coaches basically said our freshmen have been good. It's been the upperclassmen that we need more from. Uh, Jeff Jackson went as far as to calling out a couple of guys, the Janicki brothers, Strand, Silinoff, he wanted more from them. He got more from them last night. And it just looks like tonight, Jay Pandalfo getting a lot more from his upperclassmen, too. He's got two goals from his upperclassmen. For what it's worth, BU has two goals from seniors. They've got two from freshmen, and they've got one from a sophomore. Notre Dame's one goal came from a graduate transfer in Ryan Seedham. Well, still plenty of hockey. If you're the Fighting Irish, I look down at the other end, and I see Karan, who has not had a great start to this year. And I'm not blaming him for last night's loss, but each and every shot he has handled today, tonight, uh, just seems a little unsure of himself. Double clutching a couple of times, so you know, nine shots on net isn't bad. But if I see a goalie who's maybe questioning himself a little bit, I try to get a lot more rubber his way. Less than a minute to go. 
If you're just joining us, Boston University scored their first goal just a little bit less than four minutes into the opening period. They scored five total before there were ten minutes gone in the period. So they all came in a five-minute span. As the puck comes out to Jake Boltman, his shot deflects wide. Karan doesn't have his stick. It's just below the goal line right now as the Irish still have the pressure on. Yeah, he had tripped up Cole Knubel, who was looking for a penalty, none to be called. But you get a shot on him, keep it low. In fact, on the ice. And they're not going to get an opportunity. Right now, B looking for a way to get out of trouble. They might be able to tack one more on Hudson, bearing down on Bischel. And he comes out to make a big-time save late in the stanza. That was almost a disaster for Notre Dame in the final seconds. How does that happen? That's a huge stop by Ryan Bischel, who has not had a lot of help in this first 20 minutes. And again, Quinn, Quinn Hudson with a prime scoring chance. I like the fact that Hudson brings it inside the dots, gives himself a better shooting angle. That's a big time save for Ryan Bischel. And should they come back to tie, possibly win this game, remember that stop. That's a great point. Could be pivotal if they can mount what would be a fairly epic comeback. But as you said, plenty of time. But the story after 20 minutes, Steve, is that Terrier offense looked the way we thought it might starting the season. Yeah, good bounce back for them because last night they were flat as pancakes. Right now they are very sharp and give them full credit for the 5-1 lead. An outstanding response from the Terriers after losing game one. Not one, two, three, or four, but five. Terrier goals in the opening period. They busted this one open and they lead big over Notre Dame. That score tells the story of the opening 20 minutes. All Boston University, they lead 5-1 against Notre Dame here in game two. We welcome you back inside the Compton family. I, Serena, Tony Simeone alongside Steve Conroy. That was fun to watch. That team, when they are humming on all cylinders, Steve, they are really talented, really skilled. They put it all on display there in the first 20 minutes. Yeah, they showed their speed. They showed their skill. Uh, they showed their bounce back because this is a team that really was starting to question themselves. They came back in a big way. Let's look at all five goals in order. BU last night started the scoring, and then Notre Dame flipped it on them with four unanswered. Tonight they got the first one, and they really kept the pedal down. Yeah, Kaplan gives it back to Quinn Hudson, the long-range shot. Maybe through a little bit of traffic. Ryan Bischel doesn't get it. Watch the play by Macklin Celebrini through four or five different guys. He finds the back of the net. And then a nice cycle play here by uh, BU. And that's Peterson, uh, Peterson with the goal. Luke Tuck to two on one. He calls his own number, puts it five hole on Ryan Bischel. That was their fourth goal. And to close things out, uh, this one hurts. That puck was maybe going about five feet wide. Watch from this angle. Oh. The nice redirection. He puts it in. 5 1 at the end of 20 minutes for Boston University. You saw Shane Lachance get a piece of that last one. That was really the salt in the wound of the first period. The numbers, I mean, look at the shots. 22 to 6 officially. They've adjusted them after the unofficial numbers through 20 minutes. That is, I mean, Every number is lopsided. I guess a point of interest for Notre Dame. They're doing a good job on the face-off circle. They've killed the penalties, but all five goals, Steve, came at even strength. Yeah, and but you can't be giving up 22 shots, uh, especially against a team like the Terriers. Uh, that factors out to, what, 66 in a game. And you know, Jeff Jackson talks about keeping them under 30. Last night, they didn't keep them under 30, but they won the game. Really tough when you give up 22 shots a period. 44 shots last night in the game for BU. 22 already through 20 minutes. The second 20 is coming up after this. Terrier head coach Jay Pandolfo has to like what he's seen from his team so far tonight. BU fans like what they saw from Jay Pandolfo when he was a player with the Terriers. Look at this footage that we dug up from his time in the mid-90s. Won a title in 95, was a Hobie Baker runner-up as a captain in 96. Scored 67 points that year, had an amazing career at the college level, and he was not a bad pro either. The opposite side now looks to this, and Madden intercepts the pass, starts a two-on-one with Pandolfo. How about that? 
in the 2006 Eastern Conference semis. Game four goal from Pandolfo. Great college career, great NHL career. Steve, you know what it takes to play at that level. Great player and now has become a great coach at his alma mater. Well, he was up for the Frank J. Selke trophy, which goes to the best defensive forward in the NHL back in 2006. So uh, we know he knows defense. Uh, we saw him in his college career. He had 38 goals his senior year. Yep. That was in 40 games. That's pretty darn good. <laughs> you see uh, the length of time he, he spent as a Terrier, 92 through 96. Uh, I go back to some of the coaches he had in New Jersey and I mean it's a who's who of coaches Jacques Lemaire Larry Robinson uh, Pat Burns Lou Lamarillo was behind the bench for a little bit Claude Julian uh, he learned an awful lot from each of those guys and he went out his way to talk about Bruce Cassidy watch this Zach Kluzinski shoots one on his netminder Matthew Caron will mention too on the other side Notre Dame has made a goaltending change Jack Williams is in the backup for Notre Dame, who only played 41 minutes last year for the Irish. As Karan makes another stop. Came in relief early last season, only appeared in a couple contests. And this is interesting as the puck is coming his direction now for the first time in a long time, and it rolls through his crease. Well, not only is it interesting for Williams, but it's a shot across the bow of the team. Yeah. And I mean, you know, you hung your goalie out to dry. Here's a guy who. You know, last year was the only reason you guys were hanging around for a possible bid. Uh, he's been a star each and every one of the starts they've had this year thus far. So uh, you got to look in the mirror and sometimes guys on the bench, you know, that, that sends a strong message. See how Williams performs here, and he's going up against a very talented team. Aiden Celebrini shoots. Now the rebound's loose in a dangerous spot as Green had it on the doorstep, and Williams makes a big save. Nice job. First shot. Coming in cold. Well, that's from about five feet out, right from deep in the slot. And even though he didn't catch it cleanly, nice glove save. Very well. Could have been goal number six. As Celebrini shoots again, Williams coming across, makes the save. Some deserved applause from the Irish fans here in his first appearance this season. Well, first appearance, and you're coming in cold, too. And there's the stop. And I mentioned didn't get it cleanly, but he did make that stop a little later on. Jack Hughes with an excellent opportunity. And he makes a stop on him, too. The youngster out of St. Louis, Missouri. Good size, 6-3. And appeared in a game against Air Force and also against Minnesota last year. That's it. Played all, or Bischel played all but 41 minutes. Those are the minutes that Williams saw. So he could see his output for his career double by the end of the night. Knubel sends it across for Trevor Janicki. Good work to pull the puck towards the net, but then he lost it. And Wilmer's got it for the Terriers as he brings it out of his own zone. Lost one in on Williams, and he kicks towards the corner. Driven right back in. And Janik is there to whack at it. Doesn't get out. Peterson's got it. Looking for Wilmer that time, and it ricochets up high and towards the corner. Williams has seen four shots already. Four shots in the first two minutes. So that's a good way to settle yourself down in a game. And Jake Boltman's slow to get up. Looked like he's favoring that right leg. And now a two on one as a result. He couldn't get off. Steven shoots low. The chance rebound. He scores the sixth Terrier goal, taking advantage of the Irish being down a man. And Jake Boltman was injured. And because BU had control of the puck, they couldn't blow the whistle. There it is. The hit by Peterson. Looks like he's favoring the right leg. As you mentioned, as he's trying to get off, it turns into a two-on-one. Watch to the top of the screen. That's Bowman getting off. Now, Williams makes the initial stop. That was his fifth consecutive save. The sixth one, though, he couldn't get to. It was a wide-open cage for BU. That was a big goal there. Was that, that was the chance again, wasn't it? That was the chance. <laughs> That's his second. Ryan Helliwell shoots, deflects wide. Selenov tried to backhand one towards net. It's amazing how 24 hours can change the perspective of both teams. Notre Dame was flying high after the 4-1 win last night. BU was in the dumps, and now it feels like a completely different world. Welcome to the wonderful world of college hockey. <laughs> Brennan Ali centers a feed. Good look that time for Silinoff. Almost connected, but it comes back out. Here comes Tuck. 
Trying to skate his way around Pluszynski. He does, but the puck is out of his reach now. Henry Nelson for Notre Dame had it. Then the senior Tuck takes it away from the freshman. Now Celebrini across for a one-timer from Devin Kaplan that Williams has to kick out. Another shot is in. Aiden Celebrini has his seventh. Or beg your pardon, the Terriers have their seventh. And the route is more than on. Aiden Celebrini with uh, his first goal as a Terrier. Comes from range. A real good shift here by the number one line. Celebrini, Tuck, and Kaplan. They kept it in. Oh, that goes off the oh. stick of one of the fighting Irish players in front of the net. And I believe that was Henry Nelson. He the defenseman. And there you see yeah. the brother, Macklin Celebrini, <laughs> picking up the puck for his brother. First career him. goal for his brother, yeah. yeah. You, you feel for, for Williams, so I mean, you know, he's come in, he's seen eight shots. Uh, he stopped six of them, and two of them he can't really blame for, so he's been thrown into the fire and uh, has fared pretty well, even though he's allowed two goals. Talked about it throughout the weekend. Both teams have three sets of brothers on their roster. That was great to see Macklin picking up the puck for the older brother who now has his first career goal. Yeah, watching that feature, it, it's funny how these guys, it means so much to them to be able to play with their brothers and, and to, you know, win games and celebrate because when you're growing up, it's it's a lot of competition. I don't know if you had a older or younger brother. I, I had an older brother growing up in Toronto, and it was always, <laughs> you know, mom would have to come in and break us up. Only child, but <laughs> uncle lived in the basement, so we had some good one-on-one -on -one battles in the backyard. <laughs> Well, Notre Dame's going to be searching for answers now. And as you said, Williams, I mean, he's had two bad breaks. A tough rebound in a two-on-one and a deflected puck by his own defenseman. Hard to get a sense of where he stands now early on in this second period. Here's Ryan Green. He's on his way in. Here's a quick shot from Quinn Hudson that's gobbled up by Williams. Good save to stop play. And Boston really attacking with speed. They're backing off the Irish defenders. And when you back off defenders, it gives you a little more time and space. That's exactly what Quinn Hudson had. A good speed there by Green through the neutral ice area. So the Terriers have seven goals. The last time they scored seven goals was January of 2021. Beg your pardon, I'm wrong. <laughs> March of last year. It's the last time they gave up seven as this pivot shot is in on Williams. But I'm looking at this now, Steve. We have to at least mention it. They could charge towards 10. And if they get to 10, it's going to be the first time in close to 30 years if they get there. So we'll just keep an eye on them. Yeah. And it's possible. And they're playing with a lot of confidence right now. I mentioned it in the game yesterday. And hockey's funny when it comes to confidence. Sometimes goals beget goals. You know, you just start feeling good about yourself and you want the puck and you shoot a little more often and you know, good things start to happen. There's Justin Janicki for the Irish. They're seeking any kind of spark right now. It was 2 nothing early Terriers after Macklin Celebrini scored the goal. There's gonna be a penalty coming up here. There's Trevor Janicki again. In the corner, the stick ended up under the skate of the Terrier player, and he goes down, and Trevor Janicki heads to the penalty box. I mean, these teams look completely different than last night on both sides of the ice. So Janicki battling for a puck. Uh, he'd been knocked down. I don't think he meant to trip the BU player, but because he got knocked down and he was holding his stick tightly. It ended up upending the player and then tripping him up. Terriers win the faceoff. They are 0 for 3 on the power play. Hard to believe the power play has not generated any of their seven goals. Celebrini, oh, what a feed across to Wilmer. Fanned on the shot, though. Comes out to the line. There's Macklin Celebrini. Scored his first goal of the series. Now has four on the young season. Walks in, looking for a tip that time from Green. 
And it goes into the corner. Celebrini a lot more effective on his strong side on the left side. Yesterday we saw him on his offside, you know, the right side. And yeah, he's in a better shooting position, but he just seems to be a real good distributor of the puck. And I like how he attacks the net from that left side. He's got the puck right now with some speed into the offensive zone. It's a shot that deflects up high. He's going to get it back in a dangerous spot. And he rattles the iron and burns the net. The eighth goal of the night for the Terriers comes from the freshman, Macklin Celebrini. Oh, he's feeling it right now. He wants the puck. He's taking control of this hockey game. Watch what he now. Here he backs off the defenders. Gets a shot that gets deflected, but watch him pick up this pass and bring it inside. Kind of a curl and drag move. And when you do that, you change the angle of the shot just a little bit. That went off the post, too. I don't think there's a lot Williams could do on that. Celebrini with his second of the night. Okay, now here comes the tally. Last time they scored eight a year ago against Bentley. 8-2 was the final on that one. I mean, they've got eight, and this game's not even halfway over. And Celebrini's got his second tonight, fifth on the year. This is the guy we expected to see all weekend. It's going to be a head scratcher how they performed the way they did last night based on what we've seen tonight. Yeah, just two different teams, kind of a Jekyll and Hyde. But yeah. when Jay Pandolfo talked about the youngster, Macklin Celebrini, and he said that obviously got a lot of pride, but he's just got such a compete level. And, and he talked about he competes like a Sidney Crosby or a Jonathan Taves. Uh, we didn't see that last night, but we certainly seen it here tonight. Stevens shoots towards Williams. He's able to make the glove save. And now some contact after the play. Peterson taken down, and here they go. That was Helliwell with a couple of back punches to the back of the head. And we don't like to see that. Peterson was kind of in a vulnerable position. He finally gets up and has some words with Helliwell. Ryan Helliwell will be getting the extra penalty because of this. Have to wait for them to sort it out. But that'll happen. You know, team gives up eight goals, and you might be a minus three or a minus four, and you're just sick and tired of seeing guys getting second and third opportunities in front of the net. There's Helliwell battling right now. And oh. Maybe Peterson had given Williams a little jab with his stick, but he didn't. There was nothing from Peterson, really. That seems like Helliwell trying to get his guys going, but you don't like to see him come to the back of the head like that. Yeah. I think Stevens is talking about it right now. The officials are looking at this, Steve, and I think it's because of that. I, I think they're going to look at this and maybe consider a possible misconduct because that was, like you said, there was no real lead up to it. And it was just Helliwell, at least from my vantage point, seeing it just that first time on the replay, like he just took a swing at the back of his head. And they're, again, whether it's in the run of play or after the play, very concerned about that contact to, to the head. head. Yeah, oh, that's a good point by you. And right now, both referees looking at the replay in front. And I think if they see what we saw, Ryan Helliwell is probably out of this hockey game. Jay Pandolfo. I'll, I'll get back to finally because I mentioned Bruce Cassidy twice. I'm going to finish it right now. He talked about Bruce Cassidy. He was on the bench when Bruce Cassidy was head coach in Boston. Jay Pandolfo was an assistant coach. He said he learned he learned a lot about defense in New Jersey, but he learned about transition with Bruce Cassidy, yeah. about playing good defense. But when you get the puck, what do you do with it? You know, transitioning to offense and getting opportunities. And he said last year they scored a ton of goals off of good defense. And he said, I haven't seen that this year yet. I thought that was interesting to hear. You pointed it out, Steve. He wasn't uh, quick to just say, yeah, we got to be really good defensively. He said, there's no point in being good defensively if it doesn't lead to something mm -hmm. offensively. I thought that was really refreshing to hear that perspective because so often you get caught up in the coach speak, whoever you may be, and it's like, we just got to be sound defensively. And he was, well, no, you got to be more than that. And, and that was cool to hear. Well, you know what coaches realize is when you're good defensively, 
and you steal a puck, the other team's thinking offense, and they're probably out of position. And if you can get going the other direction in a hurry, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to catch some guys out of position. And I think that's what Jay Pandolfo was alluding to. Jeff Jackson has alluded to it in the past, too, about yeah. uh, getting the puck back and what do you do with it. And, you know, you, you want to score and you, you want to maybe get a chance as quickly as possible once you do create the turnover. Now, this is taking a little longer than I thought. Yeah. We're still talking it over, so uh, just just one more thing with Jay Pandolfo. I, I mentioned some of the, 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 the coaches he had in the pros. Of course, he had Jack Parker, the legendary Jack Parker when he was at BU. Yeah. Uh, he also had Vyacheslav Trechak, who was an assistant coach with the New Jersey Devils. Right. So Trechak, of course, great goalie with uh, the Russian team in the 70s. Uh, he was part of the coaching staff of Larry Robinson and, and, uh, and even Robbie Fatorik with an assistant coach. Here's the call. After review, the following penalties have been assessed. Number 13 for Boston, a five-minute major in a game misconduct for face mask. Notre Dame, number 17, a five and a DQ for fighting. We will continue five on five. Wow. Sound like Peterson got a five-minute major. Not too sure why. I heard the five-minute major for Helliwell. They, they called five. So Helliwell, they gave him a, a DQ yeah. and a game misconduct, as you said. You see him. Good look from our team as he walks down the, the Hall of Shame there. But then they, they got face masking for Peterson. I didn't notice that. Maybe in the retaliation oh, after maybe. that, he took the face or he went after the face mask. Maybe when he got back up, yeah. And they, they sent him off, but they didn't announce, at least I didn't hear them announce the misconduct. But he's not on the he's not on the bench. Oh, there it is. Oh, I see. Yeah, that might have been why they were looking for so long. Yeah, because that was what started it. And that was in the retaliation. So I think it's a five and a ten. So that's why he went off because 15 minutes. There's only 12 and a half minutes to go in this period. Right. But Helliwell did get thrown out of the game. So yeah. He will not be back. Peterson will be back. In the third. Yeah, three minutes into the third. A lot of housekeeping in an 8 1 game already as Danny Nelson shoots, gets the puck back. So it is, just to make sure, it is five on five after all that. Ouch. That hit Gallagher high. He's kind of stunned, but he's staying out there. Well, no, they've got Peterson in here with a misconduct. So maybe he is done. We'll see. We'll keep an eye out for him if he comes out in the third. As Moynihan walks in, shoots, and Karan makes the easy glove save. Not to overdo it, but that could be just a 10 minute misconduct, right? So a five. I heard the five. But he so went, so yeah, you're right. 10 and a five. Yeah. So, you know, it's a little different than a game misconduct, but yeah. we'll have to wait and see if he's around for the third period. Well, Karan has not seen much action. That was just the tenth shot on net, almost halfway through this hockey game. He did catch that one cleanly, so uh, I'm sure he's playing with a little more confidence. When you got an eight-seven run lead, they're <laughs> up eight-one. Uh, he's feeling pretty good about his game. The Terriers, for what it's worth, also have already put 33 shots on net as Celebrini pulls it through his legs on his way towards the cage, and it's kicked away. He, he pulled it through his legs a couple of times. He did it right in the neutral ice area. And he thought, this feels good. I'm going to do it again. And he did it just inside the blue line. What better time than to put the skills on display than when you have the 8 1 lead? As Nelson throws it into the opposite corner. Janicki absorbs a hit. And back it comes out through center ice. Luke Tuck skates into the offensive zone. Senior forward will just send it down low. Mentioned last night his brother Alex, who plays for the Buffalo Sabres, played for Boston College his college career so the brothers both on the East Coast but playing for different Boston teams. They're both upstate New York natives so Alex Tuck of course with the Buffalo Sabres real happy to be back yeah. in the, uh, the New York uh, Buffalo area. Clock approaching the midway point of the second period. Score tells it all. It's been all Terriers in this game two tonight after the Irish won four to one in game one last night. 
Here's Lachance, great feet ahead for Stevens. He moves his way in, and Williams makes a big save. It's a good save. I mean, that was labeled inside left post, and he goes down in the butterfly and made it look easy. Shane Lachance has had a great night for the Terriers. Had that goal and that great redirection. Also had the rebound goal. That was a great feed to spring them for the two-on-one. Good hands for a big guy. We mentioned his size a couple times at 6'5", but you know, he can move around the ice. He doesn't look like he's moving really fast, but with those long legs, that big stride, he can cover a lot of ice in a hurry. He mentioned his grandfather earlier, Jack Parker, the longtime head coach here at BU for 40 years, won three national titles. Oh my goodness, as Zabonet speeds his way into the offensive end, and Williams is able to make the stop. You noticed him last night, Tony, a number of times. He's just got really good speed. You know, his legs just never stop. Nick Zabonet, a guy that really popped for them last year with eight goals after just one goal in his freshman and sophomore campaigns combined. His speed has really jumped off the screen in this series as the puck comes in on Williams, and he has to Hand it off to Drew Bavaro. Out towards the line. Ty Gallagher's there. Kaplan gives it right back to Gallagher, looking back door this time for Green. Catches the puck, pivots and shoots, and Moynihan blocks it for the Irish. Wow, BU five on five. I mean, at times tonight, Steve, it's looked like they've had an extra skater out there. They're moving through the offensive zone completely differently than they were last night. At times, they're just playing keep away. And there right now, Steele, Danny Nelson, a little lackadaisical with the puck. But they're playing keep away. Ty Gallagher just, you know, got it at the point. He gave it to a winger. He jumped down low. He gets it back. And uh, having a lot of fun right now with eight goals on the board. Zach Pluszynski for the Irish. Lost it for a moment. Notre Dame having trouble getting out of their own end. Nothing going Notre Dame's way. Everything going in the Terrier direction. This long pass is too long, and that's an icing call to bring the puck back in the opposite direction. And we're going to have a couple of tired fighting Irish players on the ice, and Jay Pondolfo decides to send out a, a fresh crew up front. It's the number one line. Macklin Celebrini with... Kaplan and Tuck. Celebrini and Lachance each have two. Both are freshmen. They would both be looking for their first career hat trick. As Frechette shoots one, and Williams gets a glove on it and was going well wide. Tuck sends it around for Gavin McCarthy. Sends it right back to Tuck. Celebrini's all the way across, calling for the puck. It's just out of his reach, but he gathers it off the wall. Here's Macklin Celebrini. Works his way through, and he catches the crossbar, and it goes out of play. Just an inch from a hat trick for the freshman. Still plenty of time, though, as the Terriers lead big. Boston University has more than bounced back in game two against Notre Dame. This is what they did last year. Really impressive run all the way to the Frozen Four. First time in eight years. And high hopes this year. Number one team preseason. First two weeks, Steve, it's been a little bit rocky. Man, tonight they have looked like the team that can back up that performance that we saw from a year ago. Yeah, and keep in mind, too, that was Jay Pandalfo's first year behind the bench. Yeah. So, you know, Everything was just going right, and we didn't mention Drew Comesso was the goaltender for that team, and he was had a fantastic season last year. He has since moved on to the AHL with the Rockford Icehawks, of course the draft pick of the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, but that all being said, they didn't get the start they wanted, but this is the type of game that can really turn a season around. Again, there's no rest for them. They've got UMass coming up after this, and then North Dakota, the next week as Celebrini's looking for the hat trick and he just shot it wide. It rolls all the way back out to center ice. Well, he's feeling it right now. We saw him drag it through his legs a couple of times through the neutral ice area. That last rush up the ice prior to the TV timeout rang it off the crossbar. You know, he shoots a little bit like Connor Bedard. And both of those guys from the north, oh, that's too many men. Yeah. Oh, Pandolfo's livid. I think he. Oh, maybe, maybe. I think there was five. And yeah. And it was the fifth guy coming on. Right, right. So they were. Oh, wow. He's getting right in his face. 
And the referee, I, you don't see that very often. The referee is right in the uh, right in the grill of Jay Pandolfo. I think what he's arguing is, and maybe we can take a look at it, but there was only four guys on the ice. The fifth guy jumping on would have been fine, and he was the guy who touched the puck. Now the ref, the rest of the referees are talking it over. The linesman and the referee. See, we see there is this. no penalty for too many men. So, Boston only had four players on the ice. We got three guys there. A guy comes on. So it's one, two. Keep going, guys. Keep going. Uh, I don't think so. It's not there. No, it's it's when the puck came over to the bench. So I don't think we're going to get be able to look at it. Well, I've never seen a bench react quite like that. I mean, I, I I've, they knew it. That bit, that, yeah. That's and why I'm assuming there was only four guys on the ice. Yeah. Now what happened was the guy who jumped on the ice, the puck came to him, but he was the fifth guy. So it wasn't like he was the sixth guy on the ice. I think it was one of those, yeah, if he was the sixth guy, they would have called the too many men, and they mistakenly did that, but the, the count was off. And the officials, I mean, they were quick. They didn't even, you know, need to talk about it much. They had it overturned. And you didn't see much of a protest from Jeff Jackson and his staff, so they must have seen the same thing. Right. Now 6.25 left in the second. And I'll ask you this, Steve. You've played in all kinds of hockey games. You've seen all kinds of hockey games. Every imaginable result. If you're Notre Dame, what are you trying to get out of this next 26-plus minutes when it would appear the result is already predetermined, but there's still something that you can get out of this weekend? Uh, yeah, you're still working on your game. I mean, you're still working on your systems. Uh, there, there's freshmen who are getting valuable ice time. Paul Knubel's still looking for his you know, first college goal. Uh, and you got to start thinking about your next opponent too. You know, you can't you can't be just floating through this game. And they talk about practice. You can practice as much as you want, but there's nothing like a game situation. That's exactly what this is. You mentioned the next opponent. They've got Mercyhurst, but it's a Thursday Friday series, so one less day of rest. That possibly could have played into part of the reason that Jeff Jackson took Bishel out of the game, mm -hmm. because with one less day than usual. You get him 40 minutes of rest he wouldn't otherwise have. And we talked about this last night. Mercyhurst, who is a good team, that's the easiest one they got coming up. The rest is absolutely brutal. All top 13 teams, and many of them in the top eight. Yeah, and, and that's a good point about Ryan Mitchell because he has played a lot of hockey last year and this year to start the season. A short week, Thursday, Friday games. Also, you hope, too, here at the end of this second period and third big key for both teams is to remain healthy. You don't want anybody taking anything silly. No chances that can lead you into a precarious spot. Oh yeah. We saw that you know, last night with Lane Hudson going yeah. down. I mean, we don't know how serious it is to Ryan Halliwell hit. But they haven't seemed to miss the fine young defenseman's performance on the back end. They haven't missed a beat. And still, only given up 10 shots so far, and we're almost 35 minutes through this hockey game. That'll be a point of interest over the next few days for Notre Dame. 44 shots allowed last night, headed towards that direction again tonight. Coming into the weekend, they were doing a great job of limiting shots. Their opponents were only getting 23 and change per game so the Terriers have made it look much easier to get shots on net against Notre Dame this weekend than anybody has the first couple of weeks of the season. Well, they haven't played a team quite as quick as this BU squad and they didn't show their speed last night that's for sure. But tonight uh, give them full marks they uh, they are a team that just flies whenever they have the puck. Good example right there Jeremy Wilmer weaving his way through traffic. Did eventually lose control, but Hudson's right back on it and carries it into the offensive zone. He started the scoring with the opening goal, fires this one up, and it did make contact with the netting, so it'll stop play with 426 left in the second. Quinn Hudson, 5'11, 176 pounds. It was Muskegon in the USHL. And I like seeing that on the bench. You know, there's no backbiting. They're not feeling sorry for themselves. It's just, you know, let's let's get through this period. Let's get through this game and let's put it behind us. It also probably hammers home how valuable that win was last night. That'll still be 
a valuable data point for Notre Dame at the end of the season. If, if BU looks like this the rest of the year, to look at an even more impressive win with every passing week. As this shot catches the inside of the post. It's been that kind of night for Notre Dame. The few times they have had chances, they've not been able to get them to go. Bavaro hit a crossbar, and now Pluszynski misses off the inside of the iron. There's Ryan Seedham. He's got the only goal for Notre Dame. Had a couple of assists last night, so the grad transfer from Harvard. He's found his scoring touch this weekend. Strand gives it off to Nelson. Puck almost came out, held it in. Now a backhand shot from Ali. Didn't get through, was loose in the slot for a moment, but then Tuck is able to skate it out of harm's way, and then as it enters the Irish zone, Notre Dame's offside, and that'll bring the puck back. And behind the play, I saw the referee signal slashing. There's this shot off the crossbar from long range. Yeah, it's the fourth or fifth iron we've heard tonight. Grant Silinoff takes the penalty. He is the lone player in the penalty box. Slashing was the call, so we will see BU back to the power play. Good eye, Steve. It'll be another power play. Terriers finally got a power play goal. Last time they were 0 for their first three. Another chance to go on the advantage. I don't think Jeff Jackson will like the fact that it's the second straight night that his team's had to kill off six yeah. penalties that they take. He did a great job killing them last night, but six a game is not where you want to be as Williams makes a nice save on a shot through traffic. It wasn't a heavy shot, it wasn't a hard shot, but as you mentioned, through traffic, so he had to get down low and track that puck. Here's Green with Celebrini on the ice. Was scoreless last night, otherwise, now in his other three career collegiate games, has managed to score two points. So three multi-point games out of four to begin his young career. He's got the puck. Trying to make his way into the offensive end. Collides with Bavaro. Pops right back up. Goes after it along the wall. Puck rolls out to the line. Willander, tons of time and space. Shoots, and it just goes high and wide. And then the puck hops off of Willander's stick and comes out to the neutral zone. He has to retreat and carry it into his own end. Celebrini skates his way in. Still holds the puck, feeds one through, intercepted by Carter Slager, and he'll clear it. We saw it again there, Celebrini. Even though the play ended up getting killed, he likes to skate towards traffic. And, you know, that can be tough as a defender. You don't expect him to come at you. Then you don't know which way he's going to go because he's like a water bug uh, sometimes with his <laughs> cutbacks. And he actually made a nice move, threw it to the front of the net, but it got picked off by the Fighting Irish. And good clearance this time. It's funny, I mentioned the shot of Celebrini. I'm talking about Macklin. It looked a little like Bedard. And Bedard mm. from Vancouver, Celebrini from Vancouver. Both of these guys might end up going back to back. First overall, both kids who played in the Vancouver area. Penalties killed off. McCarthy's got it behind the net. It's amazing how good these young players now at the top, top level. How good they are, how quick they can have an impact. See with Bedard and you're seeing someone that could be just like that in Celebrini, really finding his legs here in game two of his first real difficult weekend series against a high-level Division I team. Yeah, he's playing against 23 and 24-year-olds, and you mentioned it last night, he turned 17 in June. Yeah. So he's not even eligible to vote. <laughs> and he will uh, most likely be in the NHL come this time next year. Fun to keep an eye on him as this season goes along as like you said what he's doing a year from now is Bavaro pumps on a shot reflected through poked ahead by Tuck but Ali was on his horse to intercept it with 15 seconds left. Yeah, you're, you're not going to beat Ali to a loose puck. It's been a bright spot for Notre Dame obviously more so last night but the freshman for the Irish fighting their legs as well as he has the puck behind the net here final seconds. Specs and pushing and shoving as the clock 
Hit zero. All things considered, relatively calm in front of the net. BU tacked on three more in the second, Steve, after a 5-1 lead after one. Yeah, it's been the uh, Boston University Terrier show. And they were embarrassed last night, and tonight they're embarrassing Notre Dame. Impressive response from BU. 20 minutes left to go. During the intermission, have a chance to talk some Sunday night picks with the Pro Football Talk team, and we'll recap those three Terrier goals in the second period. It was 5-1 after one, and then Lachance, Celebrini, and Celebrini, the brothers, each collect one in the second. It's all Terriers after two. Lopsided affair here in game two between the Terriers and the Irish. Boston University has really put all their talent on full display tonight. We welcome you back inside the broadcast booth alongside Steve Conroy, Tony Simeone. Happy that you're with us. If you've been watching all night, you've seen what we talked about coming into the weekend, Steve. Mm. Five first period goals from the Terriers. They backed it up with three more there in the second. And 17 shots, too. 22 shots in the first, 17 shots in the second. Um, yeah, they were upset by the way they played, by the way they played this year. And uh, they've really taken it out on the Irish over this first 40 minutes. Let's look at those three second period goals from the Terriers. It was all the scoring in the second. Ryan Bischel played the first. Jeff Jackson removed him, and Jack Williams learned the hard way these guys can score. Yeah, and on transition, too, Fighting Irish had it deep in uh, Boston zone. They turn it over, and a uh, big rebound comes off to Chance. That's his second goal of the year. And then from range, that's Aiden Celebrini, the brother of Macklin Celebrini, scores his first. And there's Macklin, his second goal of the night. Real nice job dragging it, the curl and drag, the shot perfectly placed. And look at that scoring summary through two periods. I mean, if you condense that, that is eight goals in really about 23 minutes right. of time. Right. And all but one came at full five on five strength. That has got to be a huge, huge building block for this team that was looking for confidence tonight, Steve. That tells the story. Yeah, and, and what, what it doesn't show is they've been playing good defense. And, you know, defense leads to offense. It's all about puck possession. When you possess the puck, the other team does it. They can't score. And that's how they've uh, generated a lot of these scoring opportunities. It's been a dominant first two periods. See if they're able to tack on any more in the third. Final 20 minutes of the weekend coming up right after this. Third period is upon us here in South Bend. Tony Simeone with Steve Conroy as the Irish and Terriers are 20 minutes away from wrapping up game two of their weekend series. Irish got a big win last night, four to one. Terriers have responded in a big way. They lead eight to one after two. Have talked a lot about the scoring, Steve, I think for good reason, but this guy right here, Matthew Caron, He's been solid in net, has just the 12 saves, but they're going to have to ride him, it feels like, throughout the year. You've mentioned Drew Comesso, who was their goaltender on that Frozen Four run a year ago. Karan comes over from Brown after transferring. I think a night like tonight is really important for him and this team going forward. Well, yeah, it's good for your confidence. And, you know, he hasn't had a lot to be confident about heading into this game. You know, even last night we talked about couldn't really fault him for the four goals he allowed, but still, it's four goals, and you lose the hockey game. Um, interesting, you know, Matthew Cron, you'd expect he was probably from the province of Quebec. He grew up in British Columbia. He's from Abbotsford, British Columbia. And the number 62, I, I, I wish I knew a little background on that. Not very often you see a yeah. number 62. Um, if we That's get an opportunity, we'll ask the, the radio crew from Boston who is here to do a fantastic job for the Terriers, uh, what the story on that is. Yeah, well, that's a, that's, that's a miss on my part. I should have been all over that earlier in the week. We'll have to get to the bottom of 62. Final 20 minutes here. Seems like a formality as far as the, fi as far as the result is concerned. Some intrigue probably with the final score where it ends up. And if nothing else, and you alluded to it back in the second, Steve, if you're Notre Dame, you want to start generating some kind of momentum, positive thoughts heading into next week, which is going to get on them quickly. Thursday night affair against Mercyhurst. One less day of rest as they get set for it. Yeah, good habits. And, and it's easy to fall into bad habits uh, when you're not playing well and you're playing loosey-goosey. Not that they're playing loosey-goosey in that second period, but uh, you, know, you want to make sure that you're finishing checks. You're not hanging your goaltender out to dry. And although they did allow 17 shots in that second period, uh, Jack Williams played pretty well. 
Yeah, one was on a two-on-one, another one was deflected, and then Macklin Celebrini, future maybe first overall pick, scored on him. So nothing to really hang his head on after two periods. See if he gets some more traditional opportunities as Hudson gets one right there, and Williams does fight it off well. Again, only played 41 minutes, backing up Bischel. Ryan Bischel just owned that net for Notre Dame after splitting it a couple seasons ago against with Matthew Goleida. And so good to see Williams getting some reps, and this will obviously be valuable if they need him later in the season. Here comes Notre Dame, backhanded try. Karan makes the save, pucks loose. Rebound try from Justin Chanicky. Would not go. He was in really close, and a penalty is going to be called. Oh, he had an opportunity, too, because Karan was down and out. BU will pick up a tripping call. That's McCarthy going to the box. But Chanicky, yeah, I think he was following as he tried to hoist this over the netminder. I like the speed here. It's a three on two, so they back off the D. One of them falls down, and then Chanicky Right here has it and oh, yeah, well, that's why he didn't make contact with it. He got tripped And that was McCarthy with the trip. He goes to the box power play fighting Irish Good clean face-off win Maddox Fleming shoots towards net and Landon Slaggart's there Irish on their third power play of the night There's a Broken stick it is cleared so importantly Sam Stevens can get a new twig. Now shots right now. At least it says 41 to 14 in favor of the Terriers. Irish into the offensive end. See if they can get set up. They've not looked in sync on their power play tonight after a couple goals last night. Tuck takes it away. A chance for a two-on-one. Tuck shooting low and Williams kicks it out and now the Irish can speed the other direction with numbers Fleming has the puck gives it off to Slagger good work by the Terriers to hustle back They're really pressuring the puck maybe some bad passes and that gets thrown out into the stands maybe some bad passes by the Irish on that power play but again big stop by Jack Williams yeah and, and I love the way that Tuck shoots the puck Luke Tuck his brother Alex can fire a puck too but watch this snapshot and that was traveling at velocity. Williams is a big body at 6'3. And you know his cousin, his cousin Ben Bishop, who played the NHL, of course, for a number of years, had to retire due to injuries a couple of seasons ago. But I certainly remember him with the Dallas Stars and the Tampa Bay Lightning. That's right. I believe he spent a little bit of time with the LA Kings also, but not as big as Ben. Ben was 6'7. But still, Williams, pretty good size at 6'3". Yeah, big, tall frame on Bishop. Bishop getting him mixed up with Bishop, who now <laughs> Williams backs up. But Williams now, to his credit, has 17 saves in the game. Bishop, who played the first period, had just 16 saves after five goals allowed. So Williams has had a, a relatively speaking, and we talked about the caliber of shot he was dealing with. It's not been a bad relief performance for him. Like you say, in the future, if Head coach Jeff Jackson needs to maybe change some momentum, give somebody a rest. Ryan Bischel, uh, he's got some confidence in Jack Williams. Final seconds of the power play winding down in Notre Dame, 0 for 3. An encouraging sign for the Terriers. Their penalty kill last night was leaving some room for improvement. In fact, coming into today, they'd given up five goals in just 12 power play opportunities against so a really sluggish start to the penalty kill tonight should go a long way to kind of writing that as that takes a funny hop off the wall and then it's ricocheted off the crossbar from Kaplan that might be the sixth post slash crossbar tonight for both teams and another chance and this time it's Celebrini looking for the hat trick got it to his backhand but couldn't get it on net now you're right nine goals and at least six pucks off the iron, maybe three on each side. As Silinov was lurking in front, and he couldn't connect. And here's Hudson, got the party started tonight, gives it off to Green, who scored the only Terrier goal last night. Ty Gallagher up to Jack Hughes, gives it right back to Gallagher. We'll bring it into the offensive zone. Seventh round pick of the Bruins back in 2021. Now Bavaro has it for Notre Dame. 
Silanoff sends it deep. Irish will make a change here about five minutes into the third period. There's Jaden Davis. Haven't seen a lot of shifts from him tonight for Notre Dame. Let's see him lost it. Here comes BU again. Hudson on his way in. Hudson shoots and Williams again able to fight off another good grade A opportunity from the Terriers. Zabine sends it across as BU is looking for that ninth goal. Five in the first, three in the second, none so far here in the third frame. Carter Slagger, younger brother of the Irish captain Landon Slagger, takes it in one on four, does get a shot in on Karan, saves it easily. And the Terriers get it out to the neutral zone. Nelson. This is Henry Nelson. Throws a big hit below the play. Now Moynihan turns and shoots, and Karan makes a stop on the shot from Moynihan. Tony, while we have an opportunity, I just yes. wanted to wish special congratulations to my daughter, who's on the right, that's Braylon Conroy, and her future husband, Kean Peterson. He proposed to her today. Uh, but he did it the old-fashioned way. He took myself and my wife, Julie, out for dinner and asked for my daughter's hand in marriage. We said, of course, yes. We couldn't be happier. So that happened today at our uh, summer house up in Michigan. The colors are beautiful, but that couple, stunning. Oh, unbelievable. Congratulations to you. There he is. There's the, the guy that's adding a new member to the, to the family with the proposal. We don't know when the date will be. That happened today. That happened like three hours ago, right? It did, yeah. I, I was watching. Actually, we've got a security system. I was watching it on the security system. <laughs> because it happened outside. Um, I'm going to be a little poor around this time next year. If, uh, <laughs> I didn't want to bring it up. Yeah, they've, uh, they've got a lot of friends. They both went to Indiana. They both went to IU. And, uh, but we couldn't be happier. Kean, just a, a wonderful gentleman, wonderful kid. And they're going to have good-looking kids. Good, good for both of them. Congratulations to you. We'll talk to NBC maybe about a, a raise for next year or the end of this year to help cover the, the cost you're talking about. <laughs> We just went through that not too long ago, right? Yeah, that last year. That was a year ago. Yeah, yeah. That's a trip on BU. And that's McCarthy heading to the box. That was Cole Knubel who went down. Looks to be okay. Boston University foul number two, two minutes tripping. Tripping's the call. Knubel will stay on the ice. See the stick right into the skates of Cole Knubel. You know, Jeff Jackson talking about Cole lo loves what he's been bringing, but he just thinks he's putting a little too much pressure on himself to score. And he said once he does score, it'll come in bushelfuls. He's got the puck right now. His power play is looking to get something going in the Irish direction here. Seaton who has it. Here is Knubel. Off for a one-timer from Janicki. Wow, look at Gallagher. Give up the body and block the shot. Yeah, that hurt. He's favoring that left arm. Lost his stick for a moment. Got it back. He's shaking it off. Still on the ice. And that's what you love to see in an 8-1 game. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. Went down again for it. Didn't block it. Karan makes the save and sprawls out. He's looked like a different goaltender tonight. Look like Dominic Hoshik right there. <laughs> Dominic Hoshik, who I played in front of for a couple of years in Chicago. You know, he loses the stick. And Dominic would lose it all the time because he'd like to cover the puck with his blocker hand. Right. So, you know, you're holding the stick with that blocker glove. You can't really cover a puck up. But that's exactly what Karan did. I think I got a couple notes from me last year, but just to refresh, what was it like playing in front of someone like Dominic Hoshik? That had to be unbelievable. It really was. And I think I told you the story. He could speak very little English. But the three words he used to tell us, and if you're normally on a power play, it was, I must see, I must see the puck. <laughs> and so we would, and back then, you could clear guys out in front of the net. Oh, good shot there yeah. from Danny Nelson. Uh, but that, that's what I remember, broken English. I must see the puck. And boy, when he saw it, he stopped it. Simple instructions. And as Bavaro working out front, off to Fleming, who's played a nice role on this top power play line for Notre Dame over the weekend. Had a couple of assists last night. Bavaro 
Had a power play goal last night. Shoots a puck that time. Luke Tuck didn't have a stick. Goes to the bench. So now Bavaro has more time and space. Here's a one-timer from Nelson. And Karan makes the save. Comes around to stop it on the other post. And keeps it out again. Well, Bavaro swinging a miss, but gets it back. Still time on this power play against some tired Terrier penalty killers. Final seconds for Bavaro. Across for Fleming. Out high, Bavaro with his head up, shoots. Deflects to the corner. Power plays over. Out of the box comes McCarthy, and that's it. Great work by the Terriers on the kill. Real good job, and a couple of big stops by Karan. I, I love the anticipation on that one-timer from the right-hand side. You know, he realized where that shot was going to come from, and he was there waiting for it. You know, big stop by that netminder late in the penalty kill. No goals for either team here in the third period. It's been all BU tonight. They've got the puck at center, and now a chance to work on a three-on-two. Wilmer across the line was looking for Celebrini. Pass was deflected, comes out for Gallagher. Across it goes, McCarthy's one-timer, no, and then Wilmer had a chance on the doorstep, but it hopped over his stick. He hit an open net, too. I mean, that was wide open, but as you mentioned, just bobbled over his stick. Oh, nice pass from Ali to Silinov, tries to drag his way through, and good work by Ty Gallagher, who's had a nice game mm. for Boston University all night. And he's really stepped up with Lane Hudson out of the lineup. You know, maybe a little more ice time for Gallagher, and he's really earned it. Long range shot, didn't get through. Celebrini looking for the hat trick, tried to jam it home, no! And the rebound try from Wilmer would stay out. Good second effort there by the defenders for the Fighting Irish. And Jack Williams had committed on it. I thought it was going to be an easy stuff play for Celebrini, but a couple of Irish sticks in the way. McCarthy loses the puck, but Karan's right there to stop play. Less than 10 minutes remaining in the third period. Terriers in control on their way to a split. Last night after the game, Jay Pandolfo said he wanted his team to right the ship. They've done more than that tonight. Here's how the poll was scheduled and laid out before the season started. You see at the top, BU and BC, both teams that Notre Dame will play this season. Those two teams see each other in the bean pot. They see each other in Hockey East. And the class of that conference is at the top, and it's in Boston. Yeah, it certainly is. Great college town. Great hockey state, really, when you think about it, between high school and college and all their minor programs. As Williams makes a nice glove save here. Mentioned the bean pot, of course, Harvard and Northeastern, the other two teams that play in the bean pot. They're both in the top 16 this year, so you've got a bean pot, at least that if we're held right now, has all teams in the top 16 of college hockey. Great college hockey town. Great players come through all those programs and make it to the next level. When you think about BU, I mean, you don't think of the history they've had. Uh, five national championships, the most recent in 95 and 09. And in fact, I hope we get an opportunity. Michael Ruzioni is sitting right in front of us. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't believe that when you pointed that out yeah. earlier. And of course, Mike Ruzioni, the captain of the Miracle on Ice team, the 1980 U.S. Olympic team. And he a BU player. Chandy Might be a penalty shot. Yeah, it could be a penalty shot. Maybe the Terriers knew he was going to be here, yeah. and that's why it's 8-1. Yeah. And there you go, penalty shot. The signal for the penalty shot. So Trevor Janicki will get an opportunity one on one. Of course, he was in on a partial breakaway. And oh, there's Mike Ruzioni. Look at that. Unbelievable. Yeah. Truly an all time great. You think of that BU team and. and number nine in Boston. Notre Dame is willing to take the power play instead of the penalty shot. No. So taking the power play, probably to work on some power play stuff here. Okay. At this point in the game, not wanting to use the penalty shot. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure Trevor Janicki not too happy because, you know, he got about a 30% chance of scoring on a penalty shot. But regardless, just getting back to BU, that, that, that 1980 Olympic team, not only was Aruzioni from BU, Jack O'Callaghan played on the team, right. Boston University, Dave Silk. And the goaltender, Jim Craig, a BU alum. 
And here's some trivia, and I don't know if you knew this. Okay, give it to me. So Jim Craig played for the Atlanta Flames. He was traded from Atlanta to Boston for two draft picks, two second round draft picks. You're gonna ask me who was picked? Yeah, no, I am. Not a clue. Steve Conroy. Oh! By the Cal well, the Atlanta <laughs> Flames became the Calgary Flames. They got two second rounders, Steve Conroy, and the next year, Mike Vernon. Wow. So a little, bit of, know that. a little bit of trivia there, yeah. One of these days, we're going to get you on the screen, get, show some of your highlights and some of your numbers, because I think we gloss over that a little bit too much around here, the career you had in 14 seasons. Well, Derek Coleman tells me he doesn't like showing stuff in black and white. <laughs> and uh, I don't blame him. <laughs> Certainly not the high def that we're used to today. Oh, man. Jay Pandolfo, we saw his footage from <laughs> NHL. That was in 4x3 standard def. Yeah, that was kind of grainy, too. Yeah, and then his, his college days. I didn't realize that when you were playing, it was black and white. Okay, yeah. that, that's why the footage, it just doesn't exist. No, the it, yeah, I, I'm kidding, obviously. But what, what really throws me off watching old highlights, there's no there's no advertising on the boards oh, yeah. or on the ice. So, you know, everything looks a little cleaner and a little, it looks a lot different. Yeah. Well, the game looks different, too. It's amazing how it's evolved. Yeah. Irish looking for some momentum on the power play. And it's broken up. Sabanay through center has had all kinds of speed on display this weekend. It's really been a nice jolt of energy for this Terrier team throughout the weekend. You need guys like that. You know, you obviously have your stars, whether it's Celebrini and Tuck and, you know, Jack Hughes up front. You need those third and fourth line guys, and Zabanay's been it, been that guy. Here's Bavaro, big time drive, didn't get through. Got to give BU credit here, leading 8-1. There's a lot of reasons to get out of the way mm -hmm. of incoming shots in the third. They've done the exact opposite. Yeah, you pointed that out with Ty Gallagher. I mean, that, that's taking one for the team. And, you know, you take one off the inside of the arm, there's not a lot of protection there. And he knew exactly what he was, what he was going to get into. And he's done that a couple of times tonight. At least for now, shots are doubled up in favor of the Terriers. They've got it at 46 to 23 in the building. Fleming, this shot goes well wide. It's gonna be back-to-back -back nights though. Notre Dame's gonna have given up 44 or more shots. I'm sure that'll be a point of emphasis as they get ready for Mercyhurst because they were clipping at about half of that through the first three games, only 23 and a third per contest coming into the weekend. Yeah, Jim Jackson went out of his way to tell us that, you know, in every game they'd be in under 30 shots. And it was a, a source of pride for the team. You know, not so much against BU. And, and thinking of this BU team, you know what? Maybe better that you face adversity early in the season than late in the season. Mm -hmm. You know, you can learn from it and you can kind of harken back on it. Watch Celebrini here. He's looking for the hat trick. Didn't get it back from Wilmer, though. Yes, you know, sometimes it, it's not what happens to you that matters, it's how you react to what happens. And, you know, this is obviously a, an exclamation point. Tyler Carpenter's on his way in, and he's got the second Irish goal. Good for Tyler Carpenter, who drew a penalty earlier in this hockey game. You know, he's been in and out of the lineup already this year. And the turnover, he throws it to the middle, he gets it back, and that's a perfectly placed shot. I mean, in stride, skating to his right, shoots back to his left, just inside the post. And that's his first of the year. Fifth career goal for Carpenter, as you mentioned. Only playing in his third game so far this season. He's seen... Sometimes he finds himself in that lineup, other times he's found himself as a scratch. Love to see him get one here to maybe gain some momentum going into next weekend. He's a guy that I thought at times last year, Steve, was a really valuable forward for them. Didn't just provide energy from one of those third or fourth lines, but you saw right there some scoring ability yeah. and skill as well. Oh, he's got some skill. You know, he played with the Chicago Mission. He uh, played with some good players there, and he had some very good stats. He's on the line with Alex Turcott, and they were uh, lighting it up in the AAA division of Chicago hockey. The great thing about Tyler Carpenter, and, and you know, he's in and out of lineups, you mentioned, never complains about it, just works hard in practice, doesn't sulk, doesn't complain, and when he gets his opportunity, he shows up. 
Now you mentioned it, junior this year, so he's been on the team for two years. Tonight was his 39th game. So Notre Dame's played about twice that many games over his first two years. Mm -hmm. So to your point, he's played probably in about half the games that he's been eligible for, and he's got his first goal of the season. Uh, great guy to have in the dressing room. A great guy to have on the ice, too. Five minutes left. Story still, it's been all BU. And it'll be interesting to monitor, at least for us now from a distance, how this Terrier team progresses throughout the rest of the year. You said adversity, better to come early rather than late. Mm -hmm. If they do play the way that they are capable of, I would imagine you'll hear this team, maybe the coaching staff, as they talk about it throughout the season, this could have been the turning point. Last night was probably at least as poorly as they can perform, and tonight you're seeing the exact opposite. This is about as well as you could imagine them playing. Yeah, this could be a watershed moment. You know, they look back on it and remember when we were in South Bend and we were embarrassed and we bounced back and, and put up eight goals in the Fighting Irish. Yeah. That's, that's how you grow in hockey. There's so many young kids on this team and they've got to learn and you learn the hard way and you know, those lessons sometimes leave a mark, but you know, those are the, the best lessons to learn. You saw the schedule there as well. I think the big one coming up is in two weeks as that one deflects off the top of the bar. They've got a matchup with North Dakota, who's fifth in the country right now. Williams makes another stop. So if they played this week, it'd be five versus six. Who knows where those rankings will shake out over the course of the next two weeks. North Dakota played Michigan, I beg your pardon, Minnesota last night. And that should be a great matchup in a couple of weeks between both those teams. He's got the puck. Out it comes for Celebrini. Scored two goals tonight. He's now got five on the season. More than a goal per game to start his young career. Gets it out through center for Wilmer. Right back to Celebrini. <laughs> Looking back for Wilmer. As Bavaro works on him below the line. Jeremy Wilmer, oh, good feed that time for Silabrini, who just couldn't connect. He just knows where to go on the ice. You know, those soft areas, those areas where he's not going to get checked. And that's the great ones have that innate sense of where to be on the ice. He's got it. I don't know about you, Steve, but I'm glad this is a two-game series and not just a one-off like these teams last mm -hmm. year when they played one, because if that was the only version of 71 in red that we saw last night, uh, I'd have a different taste in my mouth than I do tonight after watching what he did against the Irish this evening. Yeah, he just, you know, he didn't have it for whatever reason. He, he got his shots. He had, you know, three or four good scoring opportunities, but it just seemed like every shot was into the belly of Ryan Bischel. He didn't have the jump he's got tonight. He kind of felt it permeate throughout the entire roster, too. They've all looked much better. This is what Terrier fans hope to see all year. Clock approaching the final two minutes as Ryan Seedham comes down for the puck for Notre Dame. Again, they got Mercyhurst coming up in a couple of weeks. I beg your pardon, in a couple of days, Thursday, Friday. And we've talked about the gauntlet that is waiting for them after that. I mean, after Mercyhurst, Penn State, Ohio State, Minnesota, who I mentioned earlier just played North Dakota and beat them 4 0. There it is right there. Number one Minnesota looks like they're going to remain number one. And they got another game with North Dakota tonight. Then BC for a one off. Michigan, Michigan State, who, as you mentioned, they're kind of all of a sudden yeah. back in the top 10. Adam Nightingale has them playing well. So, man, it does not get easier. I think, again, the two coming up against Mercyhurst, Steve. They're going to be even more important because you can't afford, I don't think, to drop those going into no. what's that really brutal stretch picks yeah. up. And that puts a little more pressure on your team, you know, T games you're supposed to win. And I think last night's win was, was good for their confidence. This might leave a little bit of a mark, but you get in a couple of good practices this week before you play Mercyhurst. And uh, you, for you can forget about this one. Could look back here a couple months from now and this win against the Terriers could be extremely valuable. 
that they got last night. Split against a team that was preseason number one. At the end of the day, probably not something they should take for granted or take lightly. Still an impressive performance last night for Notre Dame as Knubel has it through center. Justin Janicki looking for the third Irish goal. Would it go to Henry Nelson on the follow-up? Shot it and it deflected wide. Nelson again shoots. Flex well wide of the net. He's back on Celebrini. That'll be his final shift tonight. Janicki takes it away. Knubel's shot would not go. Irish have managed to double their shot count here in the third period. Had 13 coming into the period. They've got now 16 in total here in the third. Good work that time by the captain, Case McCarthy. He's been sound all week for the Terriers. Final seconds here as Celebrini was looking for the hat trick. He's got one more chance. Chips it towards net. Just went through Williams. And the clock's going to wind down. Boston University bounces back emphatically in game two with an 8-2 victory over the Irish. The Terriers have righted the ship. And you can see why they were ranked in the preseason polls, the number one team in college hockey. Uh, they certainly didn't start that way, but tonight an emphatic win against the Fighting Irish. That's going to do it for us here in South Bend for my broadcast partner, Steve Conroy, producer, Derek Coleman, director, Doug Thompson, and the rest of the outstanding crew. Tony Simeone saying so long. We'll talk to you on Thursday night when Notre Dame takes on Mercyhurst. Until then, good night from Notre Dame.